You know, this was the first of my races that both my daughters took part in. It's been amazing, though, to be honest. There were some unforced errors along the way, I have to say. Uh, I planned a two-week RV tour where I would get to show my girls the whole state and campaign at the same time. It didn't take long after we loaded up the RV on the first day, though, for me to realize my mistake. <laughs> imagine, just imagine, thinking it was a good idea to put into a single RV two small children, a four-year-old, a seven-year-old, and your husband, and the nanny, and your mother. <laughs> for 14 days, starting from one state fair in Springfield and ending at the DeCoin State Fair. In all seriousness, I am so thankful to have them here in this moment. And my two girls are in the front row, and my mom is right with them. They'll come up in just a little bit. <laughs> but the memory that I most wanted them to take away from this campaign isn't me speaking here tonight or what the headlines say tomorrow. What I'd rather them remember is what this moment says about our state and our nation that a young woman who relied on Pell Grants to get through college can one day run for a position where she can help others get the affordable education that they deserve too. That a veteran, that a veteran who now flies around via wheelchair rather than a Black Hawk can find a new way to serve her country long after that last combat mission. And that, and that the daughter of an immigrant, a girl who was on food stamps and nearly homeless growing up, can become anything she wants to be, even a multi-term United States Senator. <laughs> My life is the American dream come true, and I'm honored to get to keep working to help every kid in every pocket of Illinois realize their own dreams too. I've always thought, that there's a reason why Route 66 begins in Illinois. Because just as, it, as, just as the road weaves across our nation, touching every walk of life, passing houses of worship of every kind of denomination, and communities, rural, urban, and everything in between, so that too does Illinois tell the story of the diversity, the beauty, the strength of this great nation of America. We are the state that shaped Abraham Lincoln, the president who held our nation together even as it looked irrevocably divided, and Barack Obama, the leader who reminded us that hope isn't a luxury, but rather a necessity in that most important work of bettering our communities. We are a state that knows that no parent should have to choose between paying rent and paying for their child's dinner. A state that refuses to believe that the NRA's campaign dollars are worth another first grader being killed on her way to math class. We are a state that believes that we are all dishonored when a veteran is forced to lay their head down to sleep on the very same streets they sacrificed to defend. And we are a state that damn sure gets that politicians have no place in a woman's OBGYN appointment. We, my fellow Illinoisans, are a state that believes in those better angels President Lincoln once spoke of. Nothing about this great nation was inevitable. Nothing about our, our, ex our success was preordained. It took the courage of citizen soldiers who followed Washington across the Delaware, willing to sacrifice everything for an idea, America, and an ideal, democracy for the people, of the people, by the people. It took the sweat of the Asian American laborers who converted our nation and connected it one railroad tie at a time, breaking their backs building the transcontinental railroad. It took the bravery of black families who left everything they knew and came to Chicago, to East St. Louis, to find new homes, to build new lives, working in our factories and plants, helping us to ignite the industrial revolution that forever changed America and the world around it. From the mother of social justice, of social work, Jane Addams, to the mother of the environmental justice movement, Hazel Johnson, from John Deere to Jesse Jackson to Sandra Cisneros, from Michelle Obama to sure, I guess even her husband, Barack, <laughs> Illinoisans have led the way. We've started the businesses, broken the barriers, and set the milestones that have helped make this nation's impossible story possible. 
Because to me, Illinois is a 58,000 square mile community whose people see the inherent value in one another, who look out for each other. Whether they earn their, paycheck, their paychecks planting soybeans near Urbana or teaching kindergartners on the south side of Chicago. Whether they spend their day supporting our C-130 fleet in Peoria or helping lead their local union in Granite City, rolling the steel that helped to build this great nation. Our state has paved this nation's path forward in a million ways, both literally and figuratively. Ever since we built America's first elevated electric rail line back in the 1800s, every generation of Illinoisan has, ma has made down payments on our infrastructure that pay dividends for all of us who are alive today. With every bridge that was fortified and every telephone line hung, they made our country stronger, supercharging our economy after World War II, helping small businesses keep the power on, and helping families stay in touch through better broadband too. We led this country's industrial revolution at the start of the last century, and I know that with the courage and conviction, the resilience and brilliance of all those who call Illinois home today, we are poised to lead this nation's next industrial revolution in this next century as well. From our natural resources, energy, water, you name it, to the human resources, our farmers, our manufacturers, our scientists, the list just goes on and on. We are a state uniquely positioned to keep powering this nation as we have done for so long. But we have to remember that we've accomplished what we've accomplished in the past doesn't determine what we will achieve in the future. So we can't let up now. In order to keep leading, we need to keep making the investments that make our families and our state as strong as it can possibly be. We need to build on the work of my first term addressing the huge crisis that still affects too many families, including the one in four service members struggling to afford their family's next meal. We need to keep pushing to make pre-K affordable and accessible to all, to keep investing money in our public schools. We need to keep fixing our health care system, making sure that we look out more for that family in Cahokia Heights than the big pharma CEO who vacations in places like Mar-a-Lago. We need to ensure that no parent has to spe spend sleepless nights tabulating how to ration their, their toddler's insulin so that they have enough to make it to the end of the month. And we need to fight like hell to keep safeguarding the fundamental rights that our Constitution has long promised. You know, I went to war to defend that document, and if I could, if our nation called on me to do so once more, I'd pack my rucksack, put on my uniform, and climb back into my Black Hawk to defend it once again today. Because our Constitution means that much to me, and because it does so much to protect every single one of us. But lately, we seem to have moved away from the rights enshrined in its pages. We haven't done justice to the justice promise in its sentences and sentiments. So you better believe that in my next term, I'm going to keep doing everything in my power to change that. I'm going to roll my wheelchair into every office in the Capitol if necessary, working to ensure that our nation's first great pledge that everyone has the right to pursue happiness holds true all these years later. going to work to guarantee that everyone who calls this nation home is able to strive towards their version of the American dream, that every woman actually has a say over her own body, <laughs> that Americans living with disabilities are able to get to work and have that work, <laughs> that we are all able to love and marry who we choose. <laughs> and that dreamers no longer have to worry that they'll be forced from the only country that they've ever known. And also, that Jim Crow-esque laws don't prohibit anyone from voting come election day. That's what I'll be spending the next six years working for, thanks to each of you who cast your ballots these last few weeks. And thanks to each of you who volunteered for our campaign these last few months, caring so much about our democracy, so much that you worked day and night to ensure that our nation's next page is better than its last.